I thought we were going to continue my exploration of the old Commodore 64 uh, with the help of an emulator running on my Macintosh computer. Um, so yesterday I uploaded a video showing me programming in BASIC and showing some simple assembler programming. Um, I thought I was going to show you a very old uh, development environment for the Commodore 64 uh, that was very common used among the demo scene and I guess those people that still program for the Commodore 64 still use this environment. I know I used it a lot but yesterday I just couldn't figure out the key combinations and so on so I had to go out on the internet and, and, uh, and find some old documentation and then I had to read the documentation for the emulator so I could figure out what keys to use. So what I'm going to show you today is a um, uh, very well used uh, development environment called Turbo Assembler and the version I'm going to use is version 6. I think I used version 4 or 5 or something like that uh, in the old days, like over 20 years ago. Um, so I'm going to write a very easy, easy uh, small program known as a border flicker. Um, with the help of that environment, so well, let's start. Uh, first of all, I'm going. I have already inserted the disk into the virtual 5041 disk drive, and now I'm going to load the program. And if I don't recall wrongly, it's named as this that this get. And let's see, the drive is known as that. Yep. And then you have to come remember your sys command. I think it's like this to st actually start the turbo assembler environment. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so let's start writing a small program here. First, we're going to need to do is uh, set up a start address for a program, and we will start the program at the hex address 1000, that's 4096. And what we do want to do now is change the color of the border of the Commodore 64 and we want to loop over that. And the big thing, a big advantage with programming for an old CPU like the 6510 that was in the Commodore 64 is that you use an assembler or machine code dialect known as 6502. And that was completely or mostly memory based. So Whatever I/O you wanted to do, like writing a sign on the screen, or to tape, or to drive, or change the color of the screen, or change the color of the border, you mostly did that by writing something to a certain place in memory. So, in uh, to change the border color of the Commodore 64, you wrote to an hex address of D020. So, what we're gonna do is just loop over that memory address and uh, increase the value of the color and we should get a simple screen flicker so uh, or, or a simple border flicker so what we need to do first is actually put a label here so we have something to loop over and we call that loop that label and then what we want, what we want to do is continually increase whatever value is in the memory address D020 and by doing that we should change the border color so on the next line I want to create an endless loop here so I use another assembler operand known as jump and what I want to do is jump back to the loop uh, line so uh, basically that's what I'm going to do, a very small, easy, written assembly program. So let's assemble this one, and um, it's done like this. Um, this is how an old uh, development environment looked like. Uh, uh, not so fancy compared to Xcode or Visual Studio, <laughs> most people are known to today, or Delphi or whatever. Um, Okay, so let's uh, start the program we compiled. Uh, it's now compiled into machine code in the memory. And hey, here we got our first uh, border flicker. Um, 
Well, my next next goal here should be to actually try to smooth out this uh, flicker. And you know, I I, I did some, some nice raster programs back in the eighties and nineties. I'm gonna see if I can do that. So, what do I do if I wanna go back to my development environment? Well, I have to reset the Commodore sixty four and I'll do it like that. And then I have to put back in the memory address. Where I have the program or the throw assembler like that, and now I'm back in the development environment and can continue to to develop the program. So, well, I guess that's about that.